Welcome back subscribers, Jake here. One of the most frequent comments and questions I've been getting on my channel lately is in regards to the Crimean Bridge. Jake, why hasn't the Ukrainian military destroyed the Kerch Bridge yet? If you're not familiar with the Kerch Bridge, this is what it currently looks like. And right now, this bridge is very important to the Russian military war effort. This bridge uh, currently connects mainland Russia on the eastern shore of the Black Sea and the Sea of Azov to Ukrainian Crimea, which in effect is under Russian military occupation. So this bridge, along with its rail line, is currently resupplying all of the Russian forces in Crimea, along with probably the Russian forces over here near Kurzon. And this bridge took four years to build at a cost of 3.4 billion euros, and Vladimir Putin himself really cares about this bridge. If this bridge was destroyed, Vladimir Putin would be pretty infuriated. In May of 2018, he personally attended the inaugural opening of the bridge and drove the lead truck in a convoy over the bridge before it was open to the public. For fun, I want to show you about a minute of this clip of him driving this truck. So generally, infrastructure projects are pretty popular with the local people. It helps the approval ratings for elected officials to pass and promote them. Unfortunately for Russia, Russia is not a democracy, and Vladimir Putin is a fascist dictator. So he didn't build this bridge to spur local economic activity or improve the lives of local Russian people. He built this bridge because he knew that he was going to be invading Ukraine in the future. He knew that he was going to have to resupply his forces through Crimea in order to take Kurzon, in order to take Odessa, in order to take Moldova. Russia has been planning this for eight years, and Vladimir Putin knew that he needed this bridge to be constructed. So the question now remains, because we're almost six months into this war, did Ukraine up to this point choose not to destroy this bridge? Is there a reason potentially? Or have they just been uh, technically incapable? They don't have the weapon system capable of destroying the bridge up to this point. If you're watching this video in the future, potentially the bridge has already been destroyed. And before we talk about uh, the technical capability to destroy the bridge, I want to first make the argument for devil's advocate's sake that potentially it's not a good idea to blow up the bridge. And I'm sure that this has been considered by the Ukrainians. And the first reason is this is a pretty nice bridge. Russia kind of did a good job. This bridge is actually the longest constructed bridge currently in Europe. It's an engineering marvel because uh, this Kirsch Strait is tect tectonically active and ice can form in the Sea of Azov during the wintertime, which can be a hazard to the bridge. So Russia actually did a good job because the bridge functions perfectly fine, and I'm sure for the local people, both on the Russian side and the Crimean-Ukrainian side, they probably would like to keep the bridge in order to promote economic activity. Additionally, if the bridge is destroyed at some point in the future, whether it's 20 years from now, 50 years from now, 100 years from now, the bridge eventually will have to be rebuilt. The other reason why potentially it was a good idea 
in the initial days of the war not to destroy the bridge is because there is a serious still possibility that Vladimir Putin could die in office, he could be assassinated, there could be a palace coup, and a new Russian government could come to power that potentially would want a civil way to end this war with Ukraine. This is Petro Poroshenko, the former president of Ukraine, and he made the statements before the February invasion, but this is what he said. The illegal construction of the Kursk Strait Bridge is another indication of the neglect of international law by the Kremlin, but invaders will necessarily need the bridge when they urgently leave the Ukrainian Crimea. So, yes, if militarily uh, they wanted to demilitarize the Crimean Peninsula, the use of this bridge would help get all that Russian armor and equipment out of the peninsula. The final reason why potentially you might want to not blow up this bridge is because Russia hasn't officially declared war yet. To Russia, this is still a special limited military operation. Six months in, I know it's getting harder and harder to uh, deny it, but for Ukraine since the start, this has been a full-blown war. It's been a patriotic war for their own defense and survival. But the Russian government has not mobilized 500,000 reservists, Russian reservists, to get them pushed to the front lines. The Russian economy and the Russian industry, uh, industrial base, hasn't been nationalized for war yet. And this is still something that Russia could do. The fact that Russia has a military advantage to start this war, a larger industrial base, more economic and natural resources, and a population three times the size of Ukraine, the reason why Ukraine still has a really good chance of winning this war is because Russia hasn't declared it as a full war. I've made the explanation in previous videos the reason why Russia can't declare war or mobilize for a serious war is because the Russian people in general don't support it. Yes, they've been fed Kremlin propaganda that Nazis have been killing ethnic Russians in the Donbass region, but to go full-blown war, ideally, Russia would need some justification. Now, if Ukraine blew up the Kursh Bridge, would this be Russia's Pearl Harbor moment where the nation could rally behind the flag, rally behind Vladimir Putin, and go all in on this war of aggression, this invasion, uh, commit to basically taking the entire country. I don't know what Vladimir Putin or the Russian people's reaction would be if Ukraine starts bombing legitimate military targets such as this Kerch Bridge inside Russian territory. That is the concern. How potentially can this war escalate beyond where it currently is? All right, I've made the arguments now that potentially Ukraine hasn't want to destroy this bridge up until this point, but more than likely they haven't destroyed the bridge because they don't have the long-range weapons to target. And we know this because Ukrainian military leaders have said that this bridge is one of their top priorities. So this is a statement, uh, this was back in June, from Major General Dmitro Marchenko, this is a Ukrainian general, and he says that they need to destroy this umbilical cord bridge linking Russia to Crimea, and they need to do it as soon as they have the long-range Western weapons to do so. Additionally, from the civilian government, we don't have a statement from uh, Zelensky, However, we do have a statement from last April from uh, the Secretary of National Security and Defense. This is Aleski Danilov. And he stated in April, if we had the opportunity to do it, destroy the bridge, we would have done it. If it is possible, we will definitely do it. So we have statements from the Ukrainian military. We have statements from the Ukrainian civilian government. They definitely do want to destroy this bridge. Additionally, there are uh, NATO forces, NATO commanders, who have made public statements saying that this bridge is a legitimate military target. 
This is General Philippe Breedlove. He was a former NATO Supreme Commander, and he told the Times on Thursday that the bridge is a legitimate target, and the Kerr Strait Bridge is actually a pair of bridges, the rail line and then the road. So the conflicting information potentially that we're getting is that President Biden from the start of this war has made it clear both to Ukraine and Russia that the United States wants to supply weapons to Ukraine to defend itself, but they don't want Ukraine using rockets or missiles that can strike into Russian territory. So the question now becomes, is Crimea considered Russian territory. Uh, obviously, to the Ukrainians, no, it's not. But to the Russians, yes, it is. But there are there have been statements from uh, people within the Department of Defense saying that Russia's bridge is a legitimate military target for Western-supplied uh, missiles. And everyone this week has been talking about the HIMARS system. Uh, the Ukrainians have been supplied missiles that have a range of roughly 70 kilometers in order to strike and destroy this bridge. More than likely, they're going to need missiles with a 300 kilometer range or potentially repurpose uh, harpoon missiles. These are anti-ship missiles that have been supplied to Ukraine from NATO countries and then use those to target the bridge. Uh, the Kremlin has publicly stated that it is nothing but an announcement of terror if they do attack the Kirsch Bridge. This is some pretty sweet irony given that Russia has destroyed dozens if not hundreds of bridges inside of Ukraine. So uh, if they were to lose one of their own, seems only fitting. But the, the threat here and the threat always has been these last five or six months is that of escalation. What is Russia going to do if we keep supplying Ukraine with long-range precision GPS-guided missiles? And something that Russia could do is they could bomb Ukrainian military targets currently inside NATO territory. So right now, there are tens of thousands of Ukrainian soldiers going through intensive uh, military training inside the United Kingdom. This is a hypothetical of where this war could go, but let's assume that Russia views this as a valid Ukrainian military target that just happens to be within the United Kingdom. If Russia bombed this training facility and killed only Ukrainian soldiers, but this is inside the UK, is that then going to trigger Article 5 of the NATO Charter? Is NATO then going to be part of this war? These are the hypothetical questions that everyone involved has to Consider, once again, Russia's reaction. More than likely, though, I think Russia would choose to bomb Poland in response to the Kirsch Bridge being destroyed. On Russian state propaganda TV, they threaten to bomb Poland all the time. But, Kremlin up, but the Kremlin, up to this point, has not indicated that they are planning a direct attack on a NATO country but because Poland is the one supplying all of these uh, munitions and supplies across their border, Poland is the most likely target for Russia to attack potentially with a cruise missile in response to their bridge being destroyed that they consider Russian territory. So the Crimea Peninsula is this gray area, but in my opinion, it's unavoidable. If Ukraine can success successfully push Russia back out of the southern part and the Donbass region, then the Ukrainian military is not going to stop. If the tide turns and things start going south for Russia, then Ukraine is not going to stop until they get all of the Crimea Peninsula back. They will start eventually bombing artillery, you know, uh, strikes. Uh, everything in the Crimea is going to go boom. And the civilians, more than likely, they are going to have to evacuate. And it'll be much easier for civilians or even the Russian military to evacuate if this bridge is still intact. Russia definitely is planning for this bridge to be attacked. They've employed and tested uh, smoke screens to confuse radar and different uh, guidance systems. They have uh, 
air defense systems once again to try and intercept or take down a missile before it hits the bridge. And they're floating all of these radar jamming uh, barges to confuse incoming enemy missiles, so potentially uh, they won't be able to successfully strike the bridge. Will Ukraine, if they do get these 300 kilometer range HIMAR missiles, or they can figure out how to repurpose an anti ship missile to destroy a bridge, will Ukraine actually follow through and go through with it? That's a bridge they're going to have to cross once they get there. To wrap up this video, I want to once again share a, a Ukrainian defender that I found on Twitter. Uh, I don't, there's no subtitles for the song he's singing, but according to this person, it's loosely translated as don't cry for me when I die in a battle. And I'm just going to share about a minute of him singing his song for you. If you weren't able to hear his singing, then potentially YouTube told me that the music was copyrighted and unfortunately I can't share it for you. But if you want to go check him out on TikTok, he's actually got 86,000 followers, which is pretty decent. And uh, he likes to sing and he's currently defending his country. I think he's stationed currently in Odessa. Once again, glory to the heroes, glory to Ukraine. Inevitably, Ukraine will, will win this battle, and I'm looking forward to that day, as I'm sure you are as well. That's all for this update video. If you have any comments or questions, let me know down below. I love hearing from you guys. Till the next video, take care, be safe.